Yeah, bo, yeah, bo, yeah, bo. Welcome to your first watch build. So today, I'm going to take you through the process of building your Namoki DIY watch build kit. I hope you are happy with the parts that have arrived. I hope you are satisfied as you've unboxed them. And uh, as you follow this video, we will go through this one step at a time. This is not going to be difficult. You can do this. You're going to enjoy the result. And I'm really glad that you came along for the journey. Okay, so the tools for today's build. We have the watch case holder. And I've got a little um, cloth that I use for cleaning my lenses on my glasses. That's there to protect the case a little more. We've got Rodico, we've got the dial protector for when we place the hands. Although, I'm not sure we'll use it when we place the hands. Ha! Ah, we'll be using the puffer to remove any dust from inside the case or the movement itself. A movement holder to hold the movement. This doesn't come in the kit, so you would need to buy that separately. This is Loctite, it also doesn't come in the kit. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's advisable. This also doesn't come in the kit, also not absolutely necessary, but it's good practice. It's a little bit of watch oil and an oiler. Then we're going to be using green for hour, white for minute, and blue for second hand. Those are really important tools for today's build. We'll have our little red tipped screwdriver at the ready. I'm not certain we'll need to use it specifically today. We'll definitely be using our tweezers, our spring bar tool for placing the strap, um, we'll be using our peg wood for certain and we'll also be using the case back tool. I have a set of pliers for holding the stem when we put the stem in and all in all those are the tools I'm expecting to use for the build. Consumer builds, a face mask. It's advisable to use a face mask when working with the dial so to prevent saliva droplets from getting onto the dial. Um, a set of gloves or finger cots. I wear the gloves simply because finger cots are too small for my fingers. And then the parts that we're going to be using today. This is the one that they sent me. Uh, black stealth, black bloom, I think. So anyway, we've got the 36 mm field case, the case back, case back gasket. We've got an NH35 movement with a black date disc, which uh, goes well with this build. We've got the black loom dial the black loom, black Mercedes hands. Beautifully, we have a stem cut to size, and then we've got a really nice waffle strap to complete the build. So okay, are you ready? Step one of our build. We're gonna be putting the movement into the movement holder. So we take the movement out of its case. There's the movement, and we gently slide it into the movement holder. I really advise getting these NH35 36A specific movement holders because as you can see the ring presses into that movement holder and it fits just perfectly. Something you will need to note is that there is a stem that comes with these. This is a full length stem and when you do an ordinary build you would later have to trim this down. Fortunately we don't need that today so you can put this all together and pack that away. Right, now we want to check our movement. The first thing we want to check is that it's winding nicely. So you push that stem in and you can feel it winding. That's magnificent. You pull it one out and you check that your quick date is working. Then you pull it out a second time and then you wind it clockwise. Now, as we wind clockwise, I want you to pay attention to that little wheel there. Because as you're winding, that is the wheel that is going to change the date. And you will see there is a point at which it stops moving. You see that? Even though I'm winding, it's building up tension for the date change. And you'll see eventually the tension becomes strong enough and it flips the, the date wheel on. Am I telling you the truth? I'm not telling you the truth. It hasn't stopped winding yet. You see there? That date wheel's about to flip. And you want to you want to get to the last click. 
there. That's where we want our date wheel to be for the midnight switch over. Okay, so we're happy that this is all working well. Now we're going to be installing the dial. I just want to point something out quickly before we do that. There are two holes here. One of them up here at somewhere between one and two o'clock position and the other one down here at more somewhere between probably seven and eight o'clock position. Those are the holes that the dial feet are going to press into. Now we're going to take a look at our dial. Here's where you want to be wearing your face mask. Whenever this dial is out of the case, you want to be wearing a face mask. This dial is beautifully packaged. So let's get in the side here. There we go. We pop the dial out. Look how nicely this is packaged to protect the dial feet. Okay, so here is our first bit of building. In that, can you remember me saying there's a foot somewhere between one and two and somewhere between seven and eight that we need to keep? Now, if you turn this around, you'll find there are two feet and two feet. Please ensure that you're working on a, a surface that cannot scratch any of your parts. Otherwise, this could be a very dangerous moment. So what you want to do is you want to have a look and identify which feet are the ones that you need to keep. So if we look carefully, there's our dial, two feet there. And two feet where my thumb is and there is our movement so when this dial is on like that with the date window at the three o'clock position you want to take a look around the back of the movement and see which ones correspond with the location of the hole and i can see that it's the top one that we want to keep so we turn it around this way and we mark out the top one. So I'm going to just use my screwdriver to make a little scratch. If it's got a mark, I'm going to keep it. Now, the nice thing about Seiko dial feet is that they are always directly opposite one another. Have a look here. So if you drew a line from the one dial foot to the other, it goes straight through the middle of the movement. See what I'm saying? So if we go straight through the middle or, or the, the, the hand hole, this is the other foot that we want to keep. So we're going to remove that one. We're going to remove that one. Oh boy, now we're all worried because we have to remove the feet. It is very, very simple. What you do is this. You pick the dial up perpendicular with your pliers and you just gently rotate until the dial foot comes off. See that? There's the dial foot. We just double check. We want to keep that one. There's a mark on it and that one. So I'm losing the one closest to the date window. Hold it perpendicular, get as close to the dial as you can. Gently rotate. Now, if you, if you do this well, there's not really much left of the dial foot. However, I can see there is a little bit of a burr. I'm now using another tool that I didn't mention earlier, and it is a file. These are pin files that you can buy at a local hardware store, not expensive. Now we want to be careful here because of the dust. Now I can feel I'm a little bit low. So I'm going to pull out another tool that I didn't mention earlier. That's a movement cushion. I'm getting up onto the movement cushion. It's so that I've got enough place for my fingers. To manage the file.
All right, there we go. Now, we, this is where you want to be careful. You don't want to move this dial around too much before you blow away all the filings with your cutter. Gently take your dial out of the way and cut until everything is off of the mat. Okay, so now we're going to bring our players back. We're now ready to place our dial. So this is super, super simple. All you're going to do is you're going to line up the date window with the three o'clock position. I can see the date is 29. That's what I've got it on at the moment. And that dial, those dial feet will find the holes and you just press them in. Like some folks say, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's it, folks. <laughs> you want to have a look and see that there's no daylight between the, the retainer ring and the dial. All is good. Right. Now, what we're going to do again, just for, we're about to place the hands. So there's the hands in the tube. The Rodico is an essential tool for me for the placement and the moving of hands. So you just, like I'm moving the hands out the way, you just touch the Rodico to, to the hand and you move it out the way. We're going to start with the minute hand, the, the hour hand, of course. Right, so there we go. Got the hour hand in place. And you take your Rodico and you roll it to a point. And you just give it a light press to pick up the hour hand. Now, I'm just going to cycle through this once again. On a Seiko NH movement, it takes quite a while. To, there we go. So you see it coming. Now you see how gently I'm moving that crown, literally one little detent at a time. Listening for the click. Ah. Okay, so that's my midnight position. Now what we're gonna do, very simple. We're gonna use our Rodico. And I'm using the green pusher. Try and... Ah, there we go, no, nothing wrong. Okay, so my minute hand, my hour hand is on. I'm going to use this to push it so that it's exactly in the middle of the marker. Now, what you're going to do is you have to have a look and check if this hour hand is parallel with the face of the dial. And then you use your presser to adjust it. So I can see that it's tilted towards the hour index. So I'm going to bring my presser over and I'm going to lean my hour presser back to lift it. Now it's a little bit too far. I'm going to bring it back to adjust. There we go. We're parallel in that direction. Now you want to check that you're parallel in this direction. It looks like I'm a little bit high. So I'm going to lean it to my left. There we go. Now it's flat. Okay. So now we're going to check that it's working. We want to go around once. I'm going to go around twice. Now what I want to do is I'm going to slow up when I get between 11 and 12. Because I want to see if I've nailed it. Ah, nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. So leaving it in that position just at the 12 o'clock, you get hold of your Rodico again. What you do is you want to make a fine point with your Rodico and just clean off any dirt, debris or dust that might be on this hand. Also, you can pick up little bits of dust 
that you see on the dial. Rodico is amazing for that. Okay. Now you bring that same piece of Rodico. You pick up your hour hand. Got the white presser in place. Before you press, you want to get it just in line. Then you want to see if it's parallel. So I'm going to have a look. We've done it all right, but I think I can press it a little more. And it needs to go, if anything, I've got to lean in towards the six o'clock. So there's a good press. No, now it's standing up towards 12. So a little more of that. This is part of like quality watch building is getting these things parallel. It's important so that they don't foul one another. Okay, now we're going to do a double go around again. As you're doing the go around, make sure that when that minute hand gets to the hour, that the hour is, 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 is exactly in the middle of the other index. Okay, so that's one go around. Let's see, now I want to see how well have I got this. You want the date to change somewhere between five minutes to midnight and five after. So let's see, where does the click happen? Ah, okay, five after. That's just within my tolerance. If it, if it, uh, yeah, it's just after five after. That's that's fine. Date has changed. Now, repeat the the cleaning process. Make a fine point on your radico, and you just gently drag it along the face of the hand. All right. Now it's the second hand. It doesn't matter if the second hand is aligned or not because this is a hacking movement. So alignment, you can sort out through the setting of the watch. So I'm using the blue pusher. And same, same arrangement. Okay, looks like we finally got it on. Okay, and we wanna wanna check alignments as well. Right, so I'm gonna give it a clean before I let it go. Moment of truth. Is that it starts ticking and it doesn't fail. Put some wind in it. There we go. Minute hand's going past the second hand without fouling. Great, you have just assembled your, your watch dial onto your movement and uh, you put your hands on so next step is to put the movement into the case so what you're going to do you're going to use the stem to gently remove the movement from the holder you're going to flip it around now please be very careful here because you don't want to bump those hands against the movement holder then you gently put it into the movement holder. 
what we're looking for is we want to remove the stem. Now, if you look here, just above the stem, you've got this little dog leg piece of steel. And there's a little detent there. You want to press that down with your pegwood while pulling the stem. And the stem just comes out really easily. So here we go. Press and... And release. Okay, not the best example of that, but there it is. And now gently, you can use that same piece of pegwood. Just get under the movement and lift it out. Ensure that you haven't bent the second hand in that process. No, everything's good. Now we want to case this up. So I'm going to put the movement on this cushion and bring my puffer in with serious puffer action. I'm going to have a look. My Rodico. And pick up any remaining dust that I can see. Let that second hand go past. Okay. There's a little bit of dust on this index. I'm going to take your time about this because... Half of watch building is cleaning. Okay. Now we're ready to go with the case. Case is the same story. You want to bring your puffer in and you want to go like a crazy person. And you want to blow all the dust off. Then you want to spend a lot of time having a look at the crystal to get all dirt and debris off. So what, what I do is this. I use a cloth. To clean this crystal and I'm having a look at it through my magnifying glass and I'm looking under a bright light to see any flecks of dirt if I see any I go at them with the cloth and if they move I don't have any worries because I know they're on the top but if they don't move I'm probably dealing with something below the crystal so I'm spotting a couple of them. And then what I do is I make a super sharp point with my radico. Stretch your radico out like this. It, it just kind of opens up the fibers that are able to gather the dust. Make a super sharp point. And then what you do is you carefully come and you touch on those pieces of dust that you can see with the radico. And that way, you collect all the dust from the inside of the watch. When you have applied yourself for a while, make sure you've got all of that. Please don't touch the underside of this crystal with a glove, with a finger, with a finger cut, nothing. Because all of those marks can remain. And if they remain, they're a pain. Right now, I want to drop my my case on. What I want to make sure is that the three o'clock marker is perfectly aligned with the crown position. That is of utmost importance because that is going to affect your, your alignment. So when you're certain that the three o'clock marker is aligned with the crown, you drop it in and you give it a bit of a push. Right, then you pick the movement and the case up on the cushion, flip it round and bring the cushion in here. Then you grab your pegwood and the flat end of your pegwood and you just gently work around to push this into place. So the Seiko NH movements are held in place by friction with that, that polymer 
ring and it's actually a very effective system. So there we go. It's in place, nice and sturdy. We're seeing our watch over here. So we're done, right? No, not yet. We need to install the stem. So here's what we do. We unscrew the crown, put your watch aside, and you fetch your stem. We're first going to test to see that it is the correct length before we use the Loctite. When you're doing a build for yourself, this is a big deal, cutting the stem. Today, we're very happy. This is a very uh, user-friendly build, so the stem is already cut. So what I'm going to do, gently, I'm going to pick the stem up in my pliers, hold the stem in my pliers and screw this crown, the crown onto the stem. Okay, it's a really tight fit, which is great news. If you don't have Loctite, you probably don't need Loctite. But you have to be sure that you have tightened that crown all the way on. Then you're going to bring the watch back. And look carefully as you insert the stem that's going to go in through that channel. And you should find the home with a click. There we go. Clicks into place. You can feel it winding. Now we know if it's the right length. If when we press it down and turn, because it's a screw down crown, it's got to be able to screw down all the way. Tally ho, what do you know? It is exactly the right length. So now, having confirmed that, we can remove it again, as we did earlier. So you unscrew it. You leave it in that first position. I'm going to use my screwdriver to release it this time because my peg would went blunt on the nose so again i find that little detent i give it a gentle press it releases the crown and now what i'm going to do i'm going to take a piece of plastic for my loctite put a tiny spot in case you're wondering about music it's tony anderson playing in the background all right, there we go. And I'm just going to dip the end just a little bit into the lock tight and screw the crown back on. I'm going to bring along my oil and I'm going to use my oiler to pick up a little bit of oil. Yeah, and just drag a little oil onto the front portion of the stem. Then back we come, gently insert it into that channel. There we go, it clicks into place. And now we can wind it into place. Now we're ready to put the case back on. We're gonna move this into that device and just check it's quite large okay so i like to just put a little cloth in over here okay before we do the casing or the, the case back another good practice just to get your puffer give all of this a good a good whirl yeah climb in with a bit of rodico And I'm just having a look out for any fingerprints or anything like that that might be on this movement. Nobody's going to see this and a fingerprint on a movement really is irrelevant. But it's just quality watch building. You want to make sure your watch is clean on the inside. Now we're going to place the gasket. Sorry, there's another tool 
I mentioned in my first video, but I didn't mention today, and it's a gasket lubricant. You can buy these off of the Namoki website. Okay, here's our case back gasket. You drop it in. Put the top on. Twist it around a little. So this silicon grease does two things. One is it provides some lubrication while you are screwing back, the, screwing the case back on to prevent the shearing of the gasket. The second thing it does is it just enhances the waterproofness a little um, by bringing a silicone seal to the whole arrangement. So there's a ridge that runs all the way around the case back and you just want to get that gasket into its ridge. Okay. I'm noticing my purple cloth in the way a little. So once the case back gasket is in its slot, just confirm that all is well over there. I'm sure. Some gaskets take a bit of coaxing, but this one's done quite well. Then you bring your case back into place. They advise that you go counterclockwise first to help it find its home. And then gently. You've got to be able to screw it most of the way gently with your fingers. If you're forcing it, you can, um, you can cause a lot of trouble. Okay, so there we go. That's finger tight. Now what you do is... You bring this guy along. Now he, this wheel, opens and closes those feet. So what you're wanting is you're wanting to get one foot into one of those detents and the other into another. And you just, you use the wheel to adjust. Okay, once you have the adjustment and it's nice and tight, You give it a twirl. <clears throat> Not too much, but enough to make it tight. And there we go. There's the watch. That's the watch. Last thing we need to do is install the strap. Oh, this strap seems to have come with thin spring bars. So we're going to need to remove the fat ones for the thin ones. Nice thing about working with Namoki's parts is that they're really high quality and high quality parts save you time so you come and you use the little forked end of this tool and you use it to get behind the ridge on that bar take the bar out behind the ridge on that bar take the bar out that's the fat Seiko spring bar and that's the thin spring bar that comes with the waffle strap you put your spring bar through I just want to check if this, the fat bar fits in here. Okay, you see the fat bar doesn't fit in there. So the thin bar goes in. The other thin bar goes in there. Now when you're putting a strap or a, or a bracelet on, the part with the buckle always comes up to the 12 o'clock part of the watch. So we're going to turn the watch over. Make sure you turn the strap over and don't lose your spring bar while you're doing it. And then very simply, you put one end of the spring bar in. You position the strap between the lugs. And then you use your spring bar tool to squeeze the other end in. There we go. We heard the click. It's in. And do the other side. Just make sure your, your strap is upside down. Okay, there we go. We're between the lugs. 
And oh, that one is fast. Sean on R, there we go. The DIY Black Loom build in and done. Build time 45 minutes. So, what do you think of your first watch? <laughs> I'm sure you are so excited. You're going to find yourself looking at that thing three, four, five hundred times today alone. And you're going to sense the satisfaction of not only having a unique watch, a high quality watch on your wrist, but one that you built with your own two hands. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and keep your eyes peeled for the next watch build. Cheers.